Hello there, welcome to lesson number three in our series on using Fluid Designer for 3D printing um, to create objet d'art. Today's lesson we're going to show you how you can write um, I love you on the outside of a cube. So if you start Fluid Designer up, we need to go to Learning Projects Objet d'art. And it's lesson number three, so drag and drop 03 onto the uh, workspace. And as you can see, this is, this is the object that we're going to create in this lesson. So it's got a letter I at the top. L, O, V, E around the sides and a U on the bottom. And um, so what are we going to do? Well, first of all, we need to um, add, a, uh, add a mesh, um, add a cube. And that one's much too small, so uh, we need to change these values. We can either type in 20 millimeters for each of these. Or we could have scaled the whole thing. So 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters. Remember, whenever you scale anything like that, always go to Control A and apply the scale. Otherwise, you could end up uh, having problems. Um, now, I'm also going to switch on the snap here and snap to increment. So in other words, at the moment, we've got millimeters grid. So we'll uh, snap to the grid. We'll, you'll see that when we come to moving the uh, letters around the faces of the boxes. Or faces of the cube I should say um, so um, now the first thing we're going to do is to put the letter I at the top now before we do that what we're going to do is reposition the cursor location the dot 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 red circle there is the cursor and that's where any object is placed by default in fluid designer so if we change the cursor location to the top of this box then uh, it make life easier for us so if we set the lo cursor location and um, whoops, hang on. Um, what we're going to do is to move it up to the top of the box. Now the box is 20 millimeters, so this is 10. So any distance to the side is either plus 10 or minus 10. So if we set the cursor location as Z 10 millimeters and keep X and Y as zero, then you can see what we've done is we've put the cursor on the top face there. Now if we switch from material mode to wireframe mode, that's going to make life a lot easier for us as well. So what we want to do is to add some text. And if we just open up this panel here, they've got the icon, show the text data information icon. It's F for font if you like. And uh, what we need to do is we need to resize this text to 10. Align it in the center. Now we need to extrude it. Now at the moment that text has got no thickness, but if we extrude it by one millimeter, effectively we'll have one millimeter sticking above the box and one below. And uh, we need, we do really need a thickness of about one millimeter outside of the box for it to print okay. So we're going to extrude it by one millimeter, giving it a total thickness of two. Now if we go into edit mode and delete the word text by hitting the backspace key four times, I can now type in the capital letter I uh, for I love you and then we'll exit edit mode. Now if we just go to view and view this from the top and then zoom in we can see there's the letter I. Now if I just move it down one, two, three millimeters and that's where the snap feature comes in. I've now positioned that I on the top face. So I need to do repeat that for all the other um, letters L, O, V, E and U. So first of all, set the new cursor location, and we're going to put it on this front face now. So we want minus 10 millimeters for Y, and zero in terms of the uh, Z direction. So that's now on the front face there. And so again, we're going to add some uh, text. Uh, change the size to uh, 10. Align it in the center. Extrude it one, giving it a thickness of two. Edit the text, um, backspace key four times, and we want the capital letter L, and then we can switch um, from edit mode back, uh, back out of edit mode. Now, what we now need to do is we need to rotate this, and we're going to have to rotate it about the X axis. So if we go to show the main information icon, you'll see if I increase the X value here, it's rotating in the right direction, so I can just type in 90 degrees there. And then if I go to view and front, and zoom in until we get the millimeters, I can move it down one, two, three millimeters like I did with the letter I on the top. So we want to try and keep it a consistent uh, um, 
alignment it's not 100% line but uh, we're going to consistently keep it three millimeters down from the center line so we're now going to put the letter O on this um, face over here so again we're going to set the cursor location um, now the red direction is the X direction so we're going to go 10 millimeters in the X direction um, we don't want anything in the Y and the Z okay so there's the origin and we want to be 10 millimeters this direction for that face so again we can add text uh, we need to go to the uh, font the F icon here change the size to 10 align it in the center extrude it 1 giving it a total thickness of 2 edit it 1 2 3 4 backspace and we want capital letter O come out of edit mode now this time we're probably we're going to have to rotate it twice um, so first of all we can rotate it about the X dimension look so we just type in 90 there and then we're going to rotate it about the Z so uh, let's just see yeah so if we type 90 in Z okay now this is the front face this is the top face this is the right face so if we go to view and view it from the right and uh, we can then move it down one two three so it's in line with this one now okay so we just got to keep repeating that now so we want to be on this uh, face here with the cursor so set the cursor location so it's um, naught for X and it's going to be 10 millimeters in the green direction that's the Y direction um, so again add uh, text go to F change the text size to 10 align it in the center extrude it one edit the text backspace backspace and then uh, capital letter V come out of edit mode um, now if we rotate this about the x-axis uh, yep so we rotate it 90 degrees about the x-axis um, there we are now this is actually the back face and there isn't a view back face but if we go to view front we've got the L there and so we can move it down one two three okay so I've gone to view front but that's all right um, it uh, showed me the grid so I've lined it up with the L now if you go to the menu system view front is numpad one on the keyboard if you actually want to switch to the back view if you hold down the control key and press number one on the uh, number pad you will go to the back view so the front view you can press number one on your number pad or you can go to view and front back view you do control and the same number and the same happens for these other ones as well if you want the bottom you can do control seven um, etc um, so okay so we want uh, we want the letter E now so again we've got to set the cursor on this one so it's going to be minus 10 I think in the X um, yeah so it's minus 10 millimeters in the X and 0 and 0 okay so we're on that uh, left face now Just remember the L is on the front so again add text go to F change the size first of all and you can see what you're doing uh, center extrude edit the text backspace four times letter E come out of edit mode and this time I think we're going to have to rotate it twice so first of all we're going to rotate it about the x-axis uh, yeah so that's 90 about the x-axis and then we want to rotate it about the z-axis and it's actually a, a minus 90 this time whoops let me just open that window up and type it in minus 90 will give me the position of the E but I can I now need to go to view from the left and just drag this down one two three so one more to do we need to put it on the bottom so it's I love you so I want to let it you on the bottom so set the cursor location and this time it's going to be zero zero and uh, we need to go down so it's minus minus 10 millimeters in the Z direction there's the origin the blue arrow is the Z direction so we're going to go minus 10 down uh, so again add uh, text and uh, go to the F 
Uh, change the size to 10. Change it to uh, center. Extrude it. Edit the text. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we want the capital U. Uh, that was four backspace keys. Um, and uh, exit edit mode. Okay. Um, so we want to view this. Well, if, if we actually view it from the top, we should be able to just line it up. 1, 2, 3. We've lined it up with the eye there at the top. Uh, if we wanted to view it from the bottom, uh, view from top is numpad 7. So if you do control and numpad 7, notice we are viewing it from the bottom now. Okay, so control. So there are all the uh, letters that we need. Um, so let's just come out of that now. So let's, let's just delete the original object over here. And uh, let's switch back to material mode. So we can see that we've got uh, all of that lot to uh, select um, I love you now. Um, now the next thing we want to do is uh, we need to change these to meshes. Okay, so what we could do is we could select, um, we, could, we could do border select. If we do select and border select, if we select all the objects there, um, what we could do is go to tools, object, Tools. Oh no, that's not letting me do it. Why is that not letting me do it? Oh, don't do that. Um, let's uh, let's convert them to a mesh one at a time. So there's the L. Um, there's the I. There's the E. And uh, there's the U. Tools, object, tools, convert it to a mesh. The thing is, the, the box itself is already a mesh, so we didn't need to convert that to a mesh. It's just all of these uh, letters need to be converted to a mesh. Okay, so that's it. We should have, yeah, we, we have uh, got them all this time. So if we now do select and border select, and if we select all those objects, okay, we should be able to go to tools, object tools, and join them. Now this is not really the best way of doing it. Um, we ought to really use a boolean modifier, but that uh, is messing about and it uh, takes a bit of time uh, because of the several objects here. And what I do find is that this join command does work. Um, it only works, however, if we now process this in a certain way, because what we've got here is we've got faces on the inside. Inside these faces here are on the inside of the of the box inside of the cube and you can't print such things so um, I'm going to show you a way in which you can solve that problem easily okay well first of all what we do is we save this so we go to file and uh, save as and um, just come up through the menu system go to my projects and we're doing object dar so save lesson 03 I love you cube as a blender file now you can't print Blender files and you also need to check the mesh and as I've already mentioned there are going to be problems with this mesh because there are bits inside. Alright but there is a way around it. So first of all what we do is we go to file and export. Export it as a wavefront object to the desktop as uh, 03 I love you cube. And then what you need to do, instead of going to Netfab Basic, well, I'll, I'll do it anyway, Netfab Basic. So if I go to Project and Open, go to Desktop and I Love You Cube, you can see there's a warning red triangle here, and that's because of uh, the way we've created this. So if we go to Extras and Repair the Part and click Update, sorry, I didn't move the screen across. If I click Update, you can see that there are holes, there are border edges, and there are lots of shells. So let's try running Automatic Repair and then update it and apply the repair and remove the old part. Oh, it has actually fixed it in uh, Netfab Basic by the look of it. Sometimes it doesn't. So if I go to part and export the part as a wavefront object, export it to the desktop again as the repaired file. Yeah, we didn't get any more messages there. Sometimes with this sort of object you do find that it doesn't work with Netfab Basic. And the solution to that is instead of importing the uh, OBJ file into Netfab Basic, if you go onto the internet and if you Google Netfab Cloud, you'll find Microsoft's 3D printing 
system and uh, you register yourself as a user there and if you sign into that you can upload the file it will repair it and download it and the thing about netfab cloud is it's, it does do some more repairs than netfab basic does and so if you do have issues and i have had issues before with that cube with netfab basic the solution is go to netfab cloud but as you've just seen sometimes netfab basic does it on its own there are some inconsistencies in 3D printing. We've just seen one of them. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. Thank you.